stuff because I was waiting to see what yeah. you were saying about Gree Gree because the front end was closed. The last time I had checked, I haven't looked at it this morning, but on Friday it was down. Yeah, um, um, I have to I have to look. I was in Grace Hopper open source day. Uh, so this Augur meeting, October 8th, 7th, oh, yeah. 24. Welcome. Um, so yeah, on Friday, I was in Grace Hopper's open source day all day. And then Saturday and Sunday, basically, I had food poisoning. So, um, yeah, uh, don't eat Indian food in my town is all I have to say. Um, <clears throat> so, in terms of the release, there's there were um, some issues that Callie had identified with Augur not processing all of the multi-depth GitLab URLs. So we've cured that. And so now you still have to enter GitLab stuff at the repository level. We don't yet support GitHub, GitLab, excuse me, directories because they're just a little bit, um, they seem non-deterministic in terms of there's, there's not a clear rule set that we've been able to find about how to know if a URL is a, a directory or an organization or a repository. So we just take repositories listed out for GitLab right now, but now all of those various depths work as long as you enter a repository one by one. And so that's the that's the update there. I suppose I could share my talk to the GitLab folks to see if there maybe is some undocumented way of getting that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I really that's something that could have should have done. But we wanted to, oh, what the... sorry, I'm getting Zoom permission requests now to do anything. That's new. <laughs> All right, trying to share my screen. Yeah, so it's a. Uh... Well, we can always check this on at GitLab and iterate on improvements too. Yeah. I mean, we found we found some APIs that seem to do that kind of thing, sort of. But there's no, we're, we're we're looking for some kind of canonical rule or some mm -hmm. canonical test that we can do against a URL to identify whether it's a directory. And GitLab's the only one with this notion of directories. So whether it's a directory or an org or a repo, and. Uh, we couldn't find anything, but you're right. I think we could just check with the GitLab folks that Chaos works with in general and see if there's a, a better way. There's One imagines there has to be a way. We just couldn't find it navigating their documentation at this point. Yeah. It might, it might just, I, I just, I, I have to think that there'd have to be some, some way to tell it's maybe just not well documented. But, or you know, it's it's possible it's like super well documented right on the front page somewhere, and we're not seeing it. Um, you know, I, I don't discount that possibility. I mean, it could be a pebcac issue. You know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Kelly, with regards to the instance for you, I will. I'm going to look into that today. Yeah, sounds good. I because I had that one, and then the. Uh, again, this is information as of Friday afternoon, not this morning. But even I the... haven't changed. I didn't change anything from Friday oh, at yeah. o'clock until today because I basically I went to a five k biscuit run um, and had lunch at an Indian restaurant on Saturday, and then was sick from Saturday evening through yesterday. So yeah, yeah no worries. Um, but it looks like there might be workers down on my instance of Augur. So because I'm just, I'm starting to work on be working on the GitLab stuff of like kind of doing like an audit check to see how the translations like how it works and looks like in eight knot, as well as starting on a um notebook looking at different visualizations and metrics from a security lens. And so yeah, those are the few things that I'm working on. Um once that all gets, we get unblocked, but one thing that might be useful to go over in this meeting, if you've gotten any thought of it, of like, okay, what are the, 
next step things like going through the auger roadmap of seeing what the next steps are and also the specific areas that where you might could use engineering help and what type of engineering help so yeah i know you asked me for that last week and so for um and i just need to pull out the things from this roadmap that and identify how much engineering help and, and where it fits. There's an item I'm looking for right now pertaining to our job scheduling. So one of the issues that we discovered, not discovered, but sort of got a very good understanding of how it will actually work is if when you give, when we have keys, if any of those keys are being used heavily by anyone else, um, that key could end up like blocking the whole key rotation algorithm that we use. So if like one key dies and there's a, a string of jobs that are waiting for that key, it could hold up a lot of stuff. And we don't have any way of, of course, knowing if any of the keys that are being used on an Augur instance are also being used by someone else using it for like GitLab or GitHub development, right? So that's that's a a question and i think we, we've uh, designed a job management workaround to sort of optimize not letting us get stuck on that stuff but it involves a little bit more um implementation I, is I there talked... any way now of knowing if a key is pretty much quote unquote dead so i wouldn't be surprised if that's part of the problem on our we, on we throw so dead keys are easy auger okay. just Augur, even if it stays loaded in the database, if we encounter a key that's not valid, we just toss it aside. And we'll toss it aside every time Augur is started and it'll never get used. The case where I'm a developer and I've provided a key to get some data, and I'm also using this key pretty heavily on my own GitLab or GitHub data retrieval, that's that's the case where that key, like if if we if we have like only three API calls left on it, and we, we just end up waiting for an hour. And then all the jobs that are stacked up on that key end up waiting for an hour. And if someone else is using it, that may go on forever. Um, so it's it's finding a way to identify that condition when it happens. Because we identified one case where it was happening. And we could see where it could cause a cascading effect. Um, and, you know, this, obviously the assumption in the current design is that you're not using these keys for anything else. And that doesn't turn out to be 100% valid all the time. I'd say it's almost always valid. But when it's not, it can muck things up. Um, this other thing that we're working on, uh, reconciling moved repositories. This is pretty straightforward. We 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 do have a good... And I, Callie, you know this. We... We identified where if somebody reloads an organization that already exists before, so so I guess, I don't know how to, how to explain this. Okay, I've got 10 repos in an org, right? And I've added that organization to Augur and collected on it. And it's in this large Augur instance with lots of other repos. Someone adds an 11th repo on GitHub for that organization. If another person comes into Augur, and requests that organization, which now has 11 repos, Augur will go ahead and add that 11th repo. And then when it cycles around, uh, it'll just pick it up and that's that, that works just fine. If, however, somebody changes the name of one of the repos and somebody comes in and adds the organization, it'll add the 11th repo and it won't fix the name of the old organization because that process didn't it we don't run that process what it'll do is it'll add the renamed repo as a new repo because it's not currently in the list so the logic we have to re move repos is slightly flawed because there's this point in time thing that can occur and i don't know if i explained that well because it's sort of tricky in my head did you understand what I was describing there? Yes. Okay. So 
that's this reconciling moved repositories item in in progress that's that's what's going to fix that um issue and we've encountered it the biggest and honestly it's been me that has caused this condition in most cases um and the biggest case that we had this is in the apache organization and that's be for two reasons one i re-added apache for some research i'm doing to make sure i had all the repos and two apache it turns out renames their repos a lot so anytime there's a new repo, they give it this incubating, I think it's a suffix, but it might be a prefix on the repository name. And then when it's done being incubated and it's either graduated or dead, they remove the incubating title. So Apache renames its repositories on GitHub a lot. And, and so I, Apache is where I sort of uh, caused us to encounter this anomaly. It, it almost never occurs, but it can occur in that condition that I described. And <clears throat> so what, I, what I'm looking for is this credentials, let's see. Is it come? I swear we have a issue for it. Let's see. What? I don't know who put this in here. Rewrite facade in Java, that's madness. That sounds like something John would have put in there. All right, well, I can't I can't figure out which issue it is, but there's a, I thought we had, I know we discussed fixing this, um, this key rotation issue, and I might just not, I might not be remembering how we where it is but that's that's the biggest thing we're working on right now and this is in dev testing only because i haven't i haven't actually released the version that fixes this gitlab thing yet but i will before tomorrow i just want to do that test that you and i discussed kelly yeah sounds good so i mean are there other things that you want on the roadmap that you don't see here Are you talking to me specifically? Or, I mean, I'm talking to the whole large group of people assembled here at the massive auger meeting. <laughs> um, I don't have anything like specific top of mind. I mean, we have the, I can bring up my note. I mean, we have the GitLab stuff. Um, if we want to go towards like the second, like, like kind of next phase stuff, it would be um, getting the documentation up to date and would be getting the, um, the GitHub topics, discussion data, those would be the things like, I just don't know what scale you're asking for, if that makes sense. I can move topics over and yeah, documentation. I don't know why they don't make things an issue by default. That might be a mode you can change. I'm not sure though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With any of these online things, there's usually something I could do if I understand that it existed, right? I guess I have to open that up to... Okay. All right. Well, uh, Kelly, you can certainly, Kelly and Don, you can certainly go in and add things to these lists under 
I guess just start it in backlog. And we go through these once a week, usually on Tuesday evening, US Central Time. So that's uh welcome to do that. Sounds good. Um, I don't think we have any design updates. Uh I th and I think I think the design folks are kind of checked out for now until we have the engineering support to make changes to eight knot. That yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think when they when they can see that we'll be able to do some work, um, I think that will be exciting to them. And like I mentioned, we have our there's this release with the GitLab stuff that I will be pushing out before the meeting tomorrow. Sounds good. That's all I have, but I, I welcome other agenda items as as you see fit. I don't have anything else. I don't know if Don does. No, I'm good. All right. Well, thank you all. And I will see you in the community meeting or where else I see you next. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I probably see right. you in the data science one. Oh, yeah, data science. I'll see you there Tuesday. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.